What's the word, y'all? This is BLB. I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Say the love is beautiful, but see I'm scared of it. At first they love you, and they leave you when I'm scared. All right. You ready? Yeah. Let's get it, bro. All right, so we got the legendary BLB off the porch with us today, man. For so, sure, man. What's up? How you feeling today, bro? Feeling good, man. Appreciate y'all coming, you know, having me on here. Yeah, no problem, yeah. man. Yeah, appreciate you coming down today, man. So. All right, so, man, a lot to get into, man. So let's take it back. From Detroit. From Detroit, west okay. side. West Think, side of Detroit. Yeah, by way of Ipsy. It's a small city outside of um, Detroit. It's kind of like, uh, it's like Macon. In a sense, it's like that to Atlanta. Yeah. But I, I live, I'm, you know, born in Detroit. My mom, you know, from there. I graduated from Cooley High. Okay. Um, it's a, uh, it's actually, I actually live like six blocks away from Giovanni Payroll. Really? Yeah. He, he lived on Strathmore. I lived on Stansberry. I didn't know him, but you know, just seeing like his music videos, I was like, that's the Marathon gas station. I used to walk past, <laughs> go to school. So, um, yeah, you know, from Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. So growing up, were you always like the creative type? Honestly, yeah. Okay. I was always like different. You know, I always um, um, dressed different, you know. Um, even even when it comes to like, I just have my own opinion about things. I never just, just follow everything people did. So, and plus like, I always got roasted or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I, I had to learn to be funny because it's like I'm already skinny and bony and stuff. So that kind of brought a lot of that out of me. Like, you know, you got to gotta be a little tough growing up. So, yeah. Yeah. And you started off just making beats, right? I started off making beats, man. You know, when I, um, when I graduated from high school, I had, uh, like, I was playing basketball a lot. And then... Um, you know, LeBron James, you know, he's a year older than me. And the rule is if, if you ain't close to the person that's a year older, you got to go to work, man. You got to figure <laughs> life out. So I'm like, I ain't nowhere near LeBron. So I, I quit my, my senior year and I just started working and stuff. And then after that, I'm like, I ain't, you know, I don't, I don't want to go to college or nothing. So I started making beats. Um, that was 2004. And then just, you know, just started growing with it. And um, that kind of just turned into, you know, being an artist and stuff. Yeah. By that time, I had um, I had moved to Houston from Detroit in 2006. Okay. And um, basically, just wanting to get away, want to just a new start. Um, Houston, of course, had you know they got mansions for you know twelve hundred dollars a month. You know what I'm saying? You like got a Yo, lot of land. Man, yeah. What too much? So I'm like, man, I first I, I was 19 years old. I built my first house from the ground. You know, really? off a of work check, like working for Pepsi. Oh yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying, and uh, was a sales a salesperson, you know, with Pepsi and all, all that. But during that time, I still was just doing beats. But like Houston was like, you know, I think like in '08 is when I really like, you know, came into myself. Like I started dressing like this, and back in '08, hair just like this, same thing, you know. You and stood out back then, probably. Stood out. What in Houston? They thought I'd have jumped off a spaceship. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, who the where the hell this boy come from? But um, uh, but that you know, like I say, me being you know roasting and cracking jokes, people crack jokes. I mean, I'm I'm used to that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So even my name, you know, you know B L B, it really stands for Big Head Little Body. Okay. So I did not know that. Yeah. So when I was a kid, you know, young, they were like, you know, B. That's my last name, B. And they like, nah, I don't know B. Man, big head, little body. And they're like, oh, yeah, I know him, man. Big head, little body. So I just, that was one of the names I hated. Like, I started fighting. You said that name. So, well, you know, me being old, I'm like, man, I want to use that. I, wanna, I still want to have a B in my name. But I put L in there because I was in Houston. And I'm like, I'm around these Mexicans and stuff. And I want them to show up and show me some love, too. They're going to think it's a Mexican band. They gonna come see me, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I said, put the L in there, B L B, and you know that's kind of you know how I really like you know made that you know transformation and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. Who were some of your musical influences when you were starting out, whether producers or artist wise? Man, as far as producers, um, of course Timberland. You okay. Know, I grew up on Aaliyah. You know what I'm saying? Genuine. Um, Many Fresh, I'm a big Cash Money fan, man, big time. Like, I know, it's like, I know the songs from Lil Wayne when he was like 12, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, 
Um, of course, Beast by the Pine with No Limit. You know, okay. I'm a real big fan of that whole New Orleans, Baton Rouge era back in the 90s. Um, uh, I'm, it's kind of going blank, but, uh, you know, Rodney Jerkins, you know, like I said, I like R&B, but even like the old school cats like Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. You know, they did a, you know, a lot of stuff for Janet, but they also did Usher Confessions. You know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, Jermaine Dupri, uh, the, hit, the Hitman Squad with uh, Puffy. Stevie J, you know, a lot of y'all gonna put some respect on that man, on that man name. Like, <laughs> people don't know Stevie J, a real music legend. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it, it's funny when I when I see comments and people try and make it like he's just some character, and I'm like, yo, Stevie really made like uh, what that Sky's the Limit, you know, by Biggie, you know, all kind of records. You know what I'm saying? You can go on, but it's like, yeah, like guys like that. And um, as far as what artists, you know. My introduction to like to like music and stuff was like R and B, Whitney Houston, okay, Tony Braxton, um, Sade, Anita Baker. I'm from Detroit, so that's we play that. Like my mom broke so many tapes and records on, you know, and of course uh, Michael Jackson and Jenny Jackson, like that whole vibe. Um, and then like when it kind of rap, of course, you know Snoop. Okay, you know growing up, I think Snoop was like the first superstar rapper to really like had that that pop sensation like of course you had MC Hammer but we looked at MC Hammer like he was Michael Jackson cuz he was he was doing stadiums but Snoop was like the first rapper and that was like the end of 93 where he was um you know you hear you go down the street you see radios cars and stores and albums everywhere like I, to to compare it it was like Drake but even stronger cuz Everybody like blacks, whites, young, old, they all knew Snoop was. So Snoop was like one of my first favorites. And of course, like Pop, Biggie, Nas. I used to think I looked like Nas when I was a kid. You, know <laughs> really? you look in the mirror, you like, yeah, when I got the little cut, the little part, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, DMX, all of them. But I got a real love for like the South. You know, when Master P came and brought that out, it's like, um, you know, no limit. like. I love Soldier Slim, Mac, Fiend, Mr. Servon, uh, Kane and Abel, Moby Dick was like my favorite. <laughs> yeah, Mr. He was Ice singing, Cream, yeah. man. Like, I didn't even know he made beats the whole time. I think he just was like singing. You know, so shout out to Moby Dick, man. I, I, I definitely would love to meet him. Um, and of course, like I say, Cash Money, like yeah. PG, that's my favorite. Like, Chopper City in the Ghetto is like, when I even still now, when I feel like I'm in that mindset where I got to like just grind and step it up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play Chopper City in the ghetto. <laughs> of course, it's like, damn, VLB playing Chopper City in the ghetto. He, you know what I'm saying? He on some eccentric creative vibe, but it's like, nah, I'm from, nah, I'm from the streets now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that's the music that make me tougher just in case, you know, you know, I got to, you know, resort to that or whatever. So, um, but yeah, that's what I grew up on, you know? So it's just always a balance. And, and then being from Michigan, it's funny, like right now, all the Detroit rappers is popping. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember I was riding with Nipsey and he was playing payroll. And I was like, what you know about payroll? He was <laughs> like, yeah, cuz like Detroit, they remind me of LA. And I'm like, yeah, man, we, we grew up listening to y'all music. You know, in the 90s when the, the whole Boys in the Hood menace to society, like when we seen them movies, we well, was like, oh, we gotta be tough like that. Like, that's that's the way to be. The, gotta be like the big bros in Cali. So, you know, we grew up on, you know, from DJ Quick to Q to especially the Bay Area, you know, E40, Too Short, Be Legit, um, Brother Lynch. That okay. was one like, psh, Refuse to Lose is like a crazy record. So, um, we just always had a balance because we in the middle. And everybody know, like, when you come to Detroit, it's, if you if you solid, it's like it's home for you. You know what I'm saying? We're going to roll the red carpet out. We're going to show you love. We're going to introduce child style or protect you and stuff. But, you know, we always show out for everybody, you know, from even with uh, on the rise with T.I. When T.I. was rising up, he come to Detroit, he at home. You know what I'm saying? So I, that's what I can appreciate being from the Midwest. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you end up picking up a, a camera? You know, it's funny, um, this is an artist named Doe Beasy. Shout out to Doe Beasy. Doe Beasy, yeah. I was in Houston, and um, this at the time, I was, you know, I'm on my artist tip. You know, I got tired of, I'm in Houston, and it was basically like I'm, 
I got tired of waiting on people to get on my beats. So I said, I'm gonna just get on them and be an artist, <laughs> sing or rapping. You know, it was more song like a Kid Cudi type of vibe, you know what I'm saying? But I'm looking like this in 08, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> 09. So people looking like, yo, man, you solid, your music fire, man, but where the hell you come from? They're like, they dress like that in Detroit? I'm like, nah, they don't dress like that. Like, they wear their hair like that in Detroit? I'm like, hell no, nah. but you know, this me. And um, just being out there, you know, going to different little, Houston, Houston is like the home of these uh, talent shows. I ain't gonna lie, it'd be some finessing. They'd be like, yo, Atlantic <laughs> Records, Interscope Records. So we all used to be like, you know, we 22, 21 years old. So we just excited to be there. And then I met Dobies and I took a liking to him. And I just, I, I always give people encouragement. And uh, I told him like, yo, you know, you just gotta just push hard, man. Like I really believe in your music. And then, I start practicing with his pictures and it turned into an album cover for Reggie Bush and Kool-Aid. Okay. And when his friends seen it, they was like, yo, did y'all shoot a video? And he like, nah. And he told me, he said, B, please, you gotta shoot videos. I said, I'm not shooting on your videos, man. I'm an artist. I ain't shooting no <laughs> videos. And he's like, man, I like, all right, for you, I'm gonna shoot the video, but don't tell nobody I did it. Literally, he's like, they gonna think I'm being, you know what I'm saying, messed up by. I said, nah, do not tell nobody I did the video because that's gonna mess everything up for me. And I did that first video, uh, it was 420. It's the, uh, it was uh, the Pimpin' Pins Freestyle. It's my first video. Okay. Uh, April, April 20th, uh, 2011. And um, he took off. And when he took off, you know, he went from just like a local artist in a small corner of Houston that don't even get acknowledged for you know, music, which was the Southeast. Um, of course, when the artists grow, everybody go with him, producers mm -hmm. and directors. So now it's like, be able be, be the artist, be able be the director, and it switched to director, <laughs> artist. And I used to be fighting it. Like, I used to be, I was jealous of myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing my name on MTV. You know, I start working with guys like Killer Callion. That's how I really like, was able to step up and show my like talent along the blogs and stuff like that. Um, Killer, you know, he he came off that um, that Wiz Khalifa cushion orange juice, mm -hmm. you know, wave, and like even back then in 2011, like we used to drop his videos, and he'd be 40,000 the first like five hours. Yeah. So he was killing it, and I used to be like, man, why y'all can't just how y'all support me as a director? <laughs> just play my shit. I know I'm a little different, but damn, like I'm just trying to get on. So I had uh. I quit so many times. I used to tell Doe all the time, like, I quit. He like, B, you tripping. He said, this gonna be your way, man. He said, you gonna be able to quit your job. And I was working at Pepsi. I was making, what, like 80,000 a year. Oh, shit. Yeah, like, big money. And I'm, he like, you gonna be able to make more than that? And I'm like, nah. And then a year later, like, I quit. I was working at Coke, and then I started working at Coke, Coca-Cola. And I quit and went full time. So mm -hmm. within my first year directing, I went full time, man. And, um, it just it kept going up like every every time I would want to get back to music it'd be like okay, MTV you know what I'm saying <laughs> or he didn't did a video with this person and shortly after that I had uh you know I moved to Atlanta in 2012 so yeah you know taking off how'd you link with Nipsey um it's funny my um you know he my brother you know what I'm saying he, he was he, he was managing me but you know he family he my real brother named Chico and um I had, when I first moved to Atlanta, you know, um, shout out to DJ Nando, man, because that's how I was, I got out here. Um, I was working with Nando's artist, Swift. Okay. And um, I didn't know who Nando was till he, you know, passed. I didn't know he was a real legend, you know what I'm saying? Like, seeing how many people just show him love, you know. One night, I was like, let me go network. Went out, I'm in the middle of the street. I was on, uh, it was Harlem Nights on MLK, and I had seen Polo the Don. That was another one of my heroes. Hmm. So I'm fresh from Houston. I'm like, Polo the Don? <laughs> Man, I went, I interrupted the conversation. I said, yo, P P uh, P Polo, you Polo the Don? He was like, yeah. I said, uh, I, I do videos. <laughs> he said, what's your name? And I was like, my name? My name, and he was like, gotta go. And then he just walked into the club. <laughs> and I said, damn, I messed up. And I hear this voice that, 
See, what you could have did was, and I said, who is this talking to me? And I look, and it's Chico. And Chico like, you want to meet Polo? I'll, I'll introduce Polo. Next time, you can have your stuff together. I said, man, I got nervous. You know, I, ain't, I didn't know. I was, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I, I see, you know, movies and stories where people forget their names, but I don't forget <laughs> my damn name. I said, BL, I'm, I'm BLV. So with him, you know, bringing me on deck, I end up working under a director named Cricket that Chico was managing. Okay. So Cricket was doing all the, the rebranding of Gucci with the Trap Guys series. Mm -hmm. So that's when Gucci went back to the streets, you know, over there on Moreland, you know what I'm saying? So it was different. And then um, just me working on the cricket, people in Atlanta was like, yo, be fire. I can see he can shoot and edit, but can he like direct the video on his own? So um, Chico hit up Nipsey, people, uh, Fats, rest in peace of Fats too. Fats definitely looked out for him. That was uh, Nipsey's business partner. Mm -hmm. um, he passed like a year before Nipsey did. And, um, you know, uh, Fats set it up and I told him, I said, I don't even want no money. I'm going to shoot it. Because at first I'm like, yo, I said, man, Nipsey, man, he, he going up. Man, he going to forget about me. And then Chico's like, I got you. And then um, he came to Atlanta. And that's when he did the, the, the Crenshaw album, $100 for the, for the album. Mm -hmm. He did it in Atlanta. See, you know, it's crazy when I seen the, um, you know, the comments from Wack, you know, Wack 100. And he was saying like, oh, Nipsey won the legend. Da, da, da. It's like, yo, Nipsey came to Atlanta to sell $100 albums when Future was dropping free mixtapes. You know what I'm saying? And you know how Atlanta people is. They feel like you finesse. <laughs> hey, bro, hey, say, man, you got to charge a hundred? You know what I'm saying? A hundred? Like, man, Atlanta ain't playing that, but they showed up for Nipsey. And I filmed the whole thing. I'm like, yo, I'm going to film you. I'm going to do your whole weekend. I'm going to do the rollout. And I did the video uh, more or less. Mm -hmm. And when I did the video more or less, that was another big moment for me because it was like MTV Jam of the Week. And Jam in the Week is when your video play every hour on the hour for 24 hours, seven days out the week. So people are like, yo, you BL, can't miss it. what? Can't you miss it? So I'm just going up crazy with that one. And um, shout out to DJ Drama um, and Late. They put that together too. It was a part of it. You know what I'm saying? So that was just my big break. And then shortly after that, that's when um, Fly with TIG hit me up and he was like, yo, I want you to do some stuff for Quan. Okay. And I kind of. That's how that's how that came about. You know what I'm saying? So, so what was it like working with Gucci back then? I ain't gonna lie, man. It was a even now. I ain't, Gucci different. Gucci different. I love Gucci. Like Gucci solid though. He a solid dude. Like Gucci gonna pay you. Gucci big Gucci pay. But it's like you can't just be around him just doing weird. It's like you can't be like on your phone and text. He gonna man. I tell people that we be on set. And this happened recently with, with the new Gucci. And uh, <laughs> we in a mansion in Houston. And I told everybody, I said, listen, do not have your phones out. Don't be texting. Please don't take a picture. I said, this man got an eye of an eagle. He can see that shit from across the way. <laughs> right after I said it, Gucci was like, come here. I said, oh, oh God, you grab the dude's phone. He said, man, delete that. And I said, he said, AB, either they leave, I leave. And you know what happened if I leave. I go out all my money back, <laughs> all my money back. So <laughs> that's how he talked. So um, of course I'm like, man, this video like sixty thousand Gucci ain't saying none of that. He gotta go. <laughs> and I told dude, I said, man, I told you this man can see like he can see through walls. He know, <laughs> man, Gucci know if you talking about crazy like, cause you know I tell everybody like, you gotta realize these rappers is from the streets, whether it's stuff they did or stuff that was done to them. They don't have that much trust in nobody. Mm -hmm. So just to give them a courtesy, don't be having your phone up because they might think you working one on them. Because, of course, that happened to them before. So when he sees someone on their phone, you're like, yo, why, why, why the dude texting so fast? Why the girl texting? What was she doing? And he going to be like, come here. <laughs> he be like, you know, and when Gucci sneak up on you, he like grizzly bear. You know, grizzly bears <laughs> walk quiet, but when they stand up, shoot, man, you better run. But uh, he cool. Um... It was dope to see what he did like in the in the trap guy era in 2012 because you know although people labeled him like yo he crazy and this type of stuff it's like yo the way he treated his artists was like he gave them like the equal treatment what they needed like um you know i remember when he first was uh signing new artists and, and um 
It was like in December. And he had got thug. It was thug and PB Longway. And he was like, man, that boy thug, man. He hard, man. That boy thug hard, man. He's a young man. He wild, but man, that boy crazy, man. He hard. And Longway. And this at the time, I thought, to be honest with you, I thought Longway was the best rapper. Like, I thought he could out rap, because at the time it was thug, Gucci had, he had the Migos, he had Dolph, and then Longway. And uh, yeah, Boo Dirty too, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But out of them, I thought Long Way went the hardest because he just, he had that flow. And, um, you know, you know, growing up, of course, people seen the pictures of Thug when he grew up before the goals, high as, you know, his teeth was a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Instead of Gucci being somebody that's going to talk, you know, crazy and crack jokes on a nigga teeth, Gucci bought him a new grill. Hmm. That's what he did. So when Gucci did, the, he did the video, um, Thirsty, thirsty, uh, it's called Thirsty, and that's when you see Thug, he got his first goals. And Thug was like, look, Gucci bought me new grill, Thugger. You know what I'm saying? And, and it changed his whole, like, flow, confidence, like, because at first, you know, Thug used to be like, I don't really want no, no close-up shots, you know what I'm saying? You know, and anybody's like that, you know, it's, a lot of artists have different things, and Gucci looked out for them on that. You know, with artists like Dolph and Longway, you know, they was real, you know, hood stars, they were trapping, you know what I'm saying? That's the, them boys trapping limits. So Gucci, all they needed was a feature. So Gucci hop on a song with Long Way, hop on a song and video with Dolph, because that's what they needed. And then with the Migos, you know, it was some controversy behind that because Gucci said that their jury was fake and he threw it away and then he ended up giving us a new jury. You know, I think the Migos might have took that, you know, a little bit the wrong way. Of course, they they bossed up, you know, they legendary. But at the same time, I don't, I don't think the jewelry was necessarily fake that they was wearing. It was just that they was wearing um, like Versace jewelry. You know what I'm saying? And we all know Versace jewelry is is plated jewelry. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, but they was young. You know, they, you know, a lot of people don't realize, like, Amigos brought that flavor to Atlanta, that high-end European model niggas wearing spikes and stuff. Like, Migos brought that. And even then, they still had that sauce and flavor. But Gucci, like, let me lace them up with some jewelry, make, them, make, make it more believable, and then shoot videos. So, you know, you don't see a lot of, you know, CEO rappers doing that for the artists. A lot of times people just sign an artist and then throw you to the label and let the, the parent label deal with you. Gucci gonna get in the studio with you. He gonna call you up six in the morning. Hey, thug, we gonna do an album. We gonna drop it this week. We gonna put it on, uh, uh, what's that? Live mixtapes. And then we gonna shoot five videos this week. So I need you to get up, come to the studio right now. Like, man, Gucci gonna, yeah, everybody know Gucci get up six in the morning. And that's old Gucci and new Gucci. I was like, man, what that, how that man still up? He off the, the what's the name? The whoop, the whooping. But Gucci, like, I respect that on him, you know what I'm saying? And even with us uh, being directors, like he had bought a red camera for us. And at the time, uh, Freddie Gibbs was signing Jeezy, you know, and Cricket went to Gucci like, yo, I ain't trying to be disrespectful, but Jeezy didn't want me to do a video. And even then in 2012, Gucci was like, Go shoot that video, boy, man. I like that. I, I, I want them to know that, you know, to see that they want to mess with my people. Yeah, I know Gucci. I know Jeezy watching. Gucci like, go on over there and shoot that video, man. Make it look good. Yeah. Yeah. They using my camera. Like, he he, he real solid like that because he feel like, you know, just because you got an enemy don't mean I'm going to stop working with them. It's money. You know, and he look at the same way, like, if you go shoot a video with Gucci, he don't, I mean, with Jeezy, he ain't gonna feel like, oh, you be training him. He likes, it is what it is, make your money. And he like that, you know what I'm saying? Again, like you say, he's obviously Jeezy watching him. And, you know, that's something that, you know, every artist like to see, like, yeah, you know, everybody catching on. Yeah. Did uh, Thug trust you right away with uh, your vision? Man, to be real with you with Thug, he, he didn't care. He just didn't care. Um, like, I think, you know, even in the early days, people feel like they felt kind of like Thug was more, um, you know, how was he gay or weird or crazy? But it's like, he really is an Atlanta, like, hood baby. You know what I'm saying? He wanted them, you know? And I think even in the history of Atlanta music, like, like everybody wasn't exactly from Atlanta and Thug really from there. So when you, 
really come from the trenches and you come from like struggling and all that kind of stuff. And when you just have your music playing on the radio and you can buy your mama a car or whatever, like you feel like you won. And that's how he felt. Like all he knew was rapping, studio, rap. Music videos and shows, like in 2014, he didn't understand it. Hmm. He didn't get it. Sometimes he'd show up to a show, he'd be a little hype. But then sometimes he might show up like, lifestyle. And I'd be looking like, dog, what's going on? I'm like, dude, you gave him some lean. You know what I'm saying? It's always <laughs> stuff like that. Don't let, don't let nobody give him some bad lean. Oh man, the show over. <laughs> so, um, but he started to trust me more when, uh, after the whole Rich Gang thing, you know, it was just us, you know, me, Thug, Alex, Pat, you know, Wheezy, everybody. So it was a small team. And then I was able to like, I used to edit in front of them. You know, a lot of directors be like, yo, don't edit in front of the client. But it's like, I can't treat him like that because he ain't even gonna watch the video. Like, he just gonna <laughs> post it. I'm gonna send him the link. I'm like, yo, this is the new video. He can be like, fire. Like, that's it. Of course, he don't text long at all. Like, he don't, he man, Thug sent one word text. I don't know, you send him a paragraph, he gonna say, slap. That's it. <laughs> like, bro, I just asked you what time and da-da-da, you slap, huh? So, I know I gotta pull up on him. And, um, you know, just, as just growing with him, I think he gained a res respect, like, what went behind, you know, directing music videos. And then, um, you know, he just said they edited with me. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, he used to edit the videos with me. One like best friend, he okay. he actually edited with me. We was in Amsterdam, and um, it was funny because I told him I was like, I, of course I showed him the treatment. I said on the video, I said you know since everybody talking crazy like, oh this gay that gay that. I said best friend concept is you your best friend. I said you hanging with yourself, you fixing your own car, and you fucking yourself. <laughs> and he said slap. I'm like damn, all right, so. I did it. And I remember I'm sitting down, you know, this is the time he had the, he had his first mansion, the crazy big house. And um, sitting down on the couch, showing him the video. And I'm like nervous, I'm like, cause the, when I put his head on the chick's body, he, she was on top of him. I'm like, it got to be the first thing. And I'm like, I'm nervous. I'm like, is he gonna like it or not? <laughs> so I show him, I said, he said slap. So that means okay. You know, man, he seen that part. He said, me, yeah, man, what the fuck you doing? Know, you got my head on the chick body, da 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 And then I'm like, yo, it's going to be dope. Just relax. He said, he had, he had the F-N on the couch. He said, B, <laughs> BL, quit playing with me, bro. Quit playing with me. I'm like, oh, that shit y'all be talking about my hair. And they called me Big Foot, Big Shoe, and I called my hair British Bang. I said, come on now, I got to get my little get back. He like me. He said, dog. They gonna be on my ass, bro. I said, don't worry about it, bro. I tell you, it's gonna be a million views the first day. He like, all right, well, leave it on there, but put my head back on at the end. And I'm like, all right, all right, damn. I ain't want to, and I still didn't. Then when I was like, showed everybody, troop, everybody there. He said, B, I'm telling you. <laughs> you, you see the FN, B, quit playing with me. BL, quit playing with me. And I'm like, damn, man. Uh, but yeah, like, uh, and after that, like, I, I changed it, changed it back. So when you see the best friend video, you see his head appears back on the girl's body. Uh, um, the girl's, actually, the, it was his head on the body, but I took his head off and put the girl's head back on. Then he was like, all right, it's cool. Then I remember I was editing it, and he, he used to come upstairs. Because that's when, at the time in 2015, I was actually, I, I just moved in with him. Um, like he had stuff, you know, going on. I really wanted to be, just be around him so he just stay out of trouble. So me, Alex, we all, like, he'd go from recording with Alex to shooting video with me. <laughs> and um, I was standing up, way upstairs. He was like, it was like four floors. Like, Mitch had like four, five floors. And um, he'd come up there every day, like, be the video done? I'm like, nah. And at first he was cool, but he said, like, a week later, he like, B, this video, I ain't paying you. I said, I don't care. But when this video drop, it's gonna be a million the first week. I'm telling you that right now. And he like, I right, I'm telling you, I ain't paying you shit. I said, give my I said, when that when that million hit, yeah, I want I want extras on top of that. <laughs> man, that best friend drop, man, a first hour. This before you keep even fake views. The label wasn't even a part of it. It was just me and him. And um he walked upstairs and he was like, Hey Slime, <laughs> you was right. 
I mean, before he just kept counting, dropping it off. I said, yeah, yeah, keep going. Keep going, yeah, get the other Chanel bag with the other extras. Yeah, Blue Hunters, you know what I'm saying? So I got a, a, a big, super big bag <laughs> for that best friend, you know what I'm saying? And I think that's, videos at like- 356. 256. Well, that was a couple of weeks ago, See? maybe it went up. 256, it was crazy, and it was like, that's when he was like, yo, he was like, yeah, you about to be, you about to be going on. You about to even be working with me no more. He's like, shit, you going on, man. He just counting. I'm like, damn. <laughs> I said, I almost thought I was going to get shot. Goddamn, not paid. But it worked out. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, that's, that's my bro. You know, that's how we, you know, that's how we rock out. And um, even with the song Best Friend, um, he didn't like it. He what? liked it at first, but then he didn't like it no more. Because he plays music every day. I mean, he play it all day, every day, then he record, and he play it some more. And then um, he was like, B, I don't really want to put that song out. I'm like, wow, he's like, it's a kid's song. I said, but it's now, because it was the best friend, my best friend. And then I was like, you know, we, we got to capitalize off on it, because if it's a year later, it's not going to be worth nothing. And then he was like, all right. He was like, well, shit, since you believe in it so much, you go ahead, you set it up. He said, everything. You believe in it, set it up, and I got you. I make sure they pay, pay for everything, but set it up. And I, I made sure Alex mixed it. I set up the video. I put my own money up. Just that's because they're like, you know how you wait on labels. They don't mm -hmm. take too long. So I'm like, I ain't waiting on them. Put my own bread up. Shot it. And of course, you know, Thug made sure they took care of me. On top of him taking care of me, extras <laughs> on that. And then he was like, you know, when that, when that record release really started doing what it's doing, he's like, that's your record, Slime. And that's your record. And I'm like, man, that was my like, like my real first time of like stepping into that A and R role. Like, like, nah, we we need a record. And you know, that's when he's like, yo, I'm gonna let it go and let B.O. do what he do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But it was, I think, one video, and it's crazy. Like, it was with that. With that is a video where it's like, like, and I'm gonna unhumbly say this. Like, it birthed at a lot of y'all directors, man. With that, I see so much stuff. And it's like, I'm cool with that. You know what I'm saying? I'm real cool with that because of the fact that that's what we're supposed to do. You know, you're supposed to see what I do, get inspired by it, and go further than even what I did. That's what you're supposed to do. It's just some things when I see directors be like, using a lot of things that I do, and then you be like, who, who they inspired by? And they say everybody that they don't even make videos like, but they're trying to leave me out, and I get it. You know, they do that because they don't want to make it seem like they biting, but it's all right, it's cool. Especially when it's coming from somebody that's like, that's what I want you to do. You know what I'm saying? But it's still a lot of young directors that'll walk up to me and be like, man, you the reason why I do this. And that'd be like, it's that with that video. Yeah, and when I you had the big heads and you had the big, small heads in what? it. And it's crazy, like, rest in peace to Troop. <laughs> but Troop hit me on the DM and said, hey, Bill, you got to take that down. Slime don't like it. And I'm like, what? I don't care. <laughs> I posted it on, on Instagram. Cause like that's before I, it dropped? Yeah, to okay. check the temperature. <laughs> so I post on Instagram and then I'm like, all right, um, let me see the reaction. I thought he was gonna say something cause I was a little nervous. But <laughs> the purpose of me doing that, cause I made heads big and small. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm telling you, they, man, the whole YSL, they used to roast me every day. like. Bad, like long shoe ass boy, British bang and haircut ass nigga. I'm like, yo, like this out of nowhere. So I'm like, oh, this is my chance to get y'all back. And I shrunk Duke head, cause we be talking about Duke. I'm like, man, I made Duke's shoulders big and his head little. And then it just all kind of crazy stuff. Even if it was a lady, it was a scene in the blue car. She didn't even look like that. I, I made her nose bigger, her ears bigger, her lips bigger, just crazy shit. And I, and I see Snapchat use the same effect, filter, and all of that. And I remember I said, I ain't taking nothing down. Man, I'm about to go to the studio and see what Thug say. So I go to the studio and it's everybody in and they quiet. They're like, man, I told you, man, Slime ain't gonna like it. I'm telling you right now, you wanna take that shit down? And I'm like, man, I ain't about to take it down, man. It's got to be it. Next thing you know, Thug come out the booth with the Draco. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> Not the Draco. I <laughs> said, please. He's like, show me video. Hold the Draco. Like, what is he doing? So I hit play. I'm like, push play. I'm like, yeah. 
He watching it, and it was only halfway done. And everybody just holding their breath. They don't know what he gonna say. He looked at me, he was like, it's done? I'm like, nah. He said, nigga, finish it. I said, cool. <laughs> Thank God, he love it. Cool. Man, I went back home and added extra stuff on it. And then when I caught him alone, it's a video he like in the studio, like, yeah, it's hard, man. <laughs> so, and that was that moment, another moment where he was like, yo, yeah, slime, you crazy with it. You know what I'm saying? And I got to tell him, I said, man, the reason why I would inspire that concept was me really roasting y'all. But visually, <laughs> like, yeah, I'll make your head big. Even when he was like, he had the cup of lean and people thought he really was pissing. So I was just exaggerating so much that was going on to make, make it a conversational piece. And, and it was crazy that it was actually somebody's funeral uh, wake, what you call it, the, the after at, not after party, but the reception. Mm -hmm. It was Troop's father's reception. So it was kind of like a good moment. That's why you see old people in the video and kids, because it was really a moment of like us celebrating, you know, someone's you know, life and legacy. And, uh, you know, that was like really like me making something out of nothing. And now when I look up, I see young directors, you know, guys like Benny Flash out of Florida, like he hard. He chop it, take crazy masking and you know he one of the ones that be like yo b you really inspired me so like that's what i you know that's what i do it for man you yeah. know that's the intent you yeah. know um i want to ask you about the check video um and thug wearing the hooters tank top oh my god the hooters tank top shout out to dolly white so we in dallas you know this the rodeo tour the rodeo tour was like that tour bus had the demons of Atlanta, <laughs> heathens, little devils, every city, robbing, fighting, more robbing. It got to a point where like everybody was fighting people on the road so much that they started fighting each other and robbing each other to a point where Thug said, all right, it was, uh, I think Thug was playing, um, he was shooting dice at him, you know, Thug a big, Dice game shooting. He just loved to play with everybody. So he'd give everybody money. So he giving everybody money to play. <laughs> and they beat him and don't get no money back. And he like, y'all ain't gonna, really ain't gonna give me the money back? Like, you can take five, but y'all just gonna take 20? Okay. So they go to the mall. They get to going and doing this and that. Then one of them robbed each other for the 20,000. He said, that's it. Send their ass home, Mina. <laughs> and he said, the whole, I think he spent like, it's like 75,000 in plane tickets. Oh, really? 75,000 on rodeo tour and plane tickets. He said, he got they ass gone. Send them, first class, no class. Just as long as they go, jump seat, <laughs> get they ass out of here. So, um, you know, it was like I say, it was on that bus thugging. That's why I couldn't film much because had I had filmed what was going on, I don't even think people like tours, like the whole live, they probably be like, nah, y'all tripping. <laughs> y'all don't deserve it. Like they was on some, Bullshit, that man. But we was in Dallas <laughs> in a uh, Hooters store. And Dolly and DK start taking shirts. Now, mind you, man, we got $700,000 on the damn bus. Man, they like, I ain't about to go on the bus. I ain't about to do none of that. I ain't swiping no card. Dolly got tired of waiting. Shit, I'm gonna take these shirts, man. These folks got us waiting. So he took them, took a whole little rack of that Hootie <laughs> shirt. So, so Dolly wearing it like it's cool. And of course, you know, when you're on tour, you got merch around. And I think, I don't even think Thug knew where it came from. Thug seen a Hooters shirt and he just put it on. <laughs> so he put the shirt on and he like, yeah, turn the camera on. And I'm like, all right, cool. Turn the camera on, start filming. I'm like, yo, he wearing a Hooters shirt. What is he doing? <laughs> I'm like, about to go up though. <laughs> and, um, and a lot of people would be asking me, they'd be like, was that Birdman's money? No, 0%, all Thug's money. It was like, it was like 700. 700,000 on that bus. Damn. And it was like, it was crazy because that was like a first moment. Like he was really, you know, Thug is a person that really look out like for his people. And like, tour bus only fit 12 people. Man, it was 21. <laughs> 21 folks on the eight fighting for that bunk. What? Boom, get up, what? Oh man, Thug, man, I got my man took. Yeah, all that. Everybody like, man, it's, it, was, it was crazy, but you know, he, you know, brought them out, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, a lot of people you see in the video, like that's, that's like real YSL, you know, during them days. And um, it, was a, it was a fun moment. And, and that, that's kind of was my strategy behind like getting the vision out was more so like, okay, you got this side thinking like, 
he gay, so I ain't gonna listen to the music. Then you got this side that's like, yo, I heard he in the streets, so I don't even wanna be around that. And I'm like, let's meet it in the middle and just show him having fun. <laughs> and that's what he do. He got the, he got activist bottles and stuff and throwing them and stuff. I remember he watched the footage, he like, what the hell is Bird doing throwing my damn pints? <laughs> like that shit fucking around and still, man, we're gonna have a problem. But uh, it, it was it was funny. And even to see Birdman, like, you know, Birdman usually is like on some smooth, like, man, he in a check video with the activist bottle to the <laughs> He was living it up. Yeah, it's like, yo, man, Birdman in the 50, but it was it was cool and you know, he brought that out of everybody, you know what I'm saying? Even me just with my edit and filming, like. You know, coming from under Cricket, Cricket always like, yo, I want big budgets. I want to do Crane and Techno Crane. It's like, <laughs> you ain't got to always do that to win. And I think a lot of the young directors seen that, like, yo, this dude BL getting 100 millions of views without a camera crew. It's just him. Yeah, you know, on a he, tour bus. A tour bus. <laughs> One scene. Pull up. And, I, and it's crazy because that's what Gucci used to do this. Gucci would record a song, call you up and be like, come to the studio. You come there. He was like, you ready? Like, huh? <laughs> you got the camera like, push play. You just filming. That's how check was. I'm in a hotel room. We on tour. We was on the same bus. Rodeo tour. I'm coming out the room, pull on pants. He like, yeah, come on. We about to leave your ass. I'm like, I get on. He like, you got the camera? I'm like, yeah, right here. And he like, press play. Boom. <laughs> got me a check. Got a check. And I'm like, oh, I never heard this one. This one cool. I'm like, all right. But I ain't had no preparation. It was just straight going, but that's what make it organic. You know, a lot of these rappers, especially in Atlanta, they do the whole freestyle type thing. So with the video being a freestyle, it worked. And um, he actually sat and edited that one with me too. Oh yeah. And we was on the back of the tour bus and we edited that video. And uh, it was funny, cause London was trying to send the master. So we in Seattle on the bus, it ain't no Wi-Fi. <laughs> London like, B, don't try the video. You know I can't have my shit out there like that. I'm like, me being a producer, I respect that. So I didn't put it out. And then next thing you know, it was 3.33. I'm trying to upload the video, give it to World Star. Man, that shit done tried to, it, when 3.33 came, the video, it went out. So they didn't throw comments. I'm sitting in the back, nervous, like, damn, we gonna be <laughs> mad as hell. They like, Thug, you're a liar. You never drop videos and you're supposed to, and you never do the da He like, BL, man, what the hell are these kids talking about? <laughs> I said, uh, I'm waiting on London to give me the master. He said, man, BL, you tripping. Then he went on the internet. He was like, hey, fuck BLB. <laughs> <laughs> fuck Amina. And fuck Cooper World Star. I said, damn. He said, B, this gonna be controversy. I said, what? <laughs> he said, you just playing? He said, hell yeah, come on, man, we won't do that. He said, they gonna be messing with it. He said, you gotta get back on there and say, fuck me too. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, so I went on there, man, folks in there in the comments talking about, Bill, you banned from Alabama. I'm like, <laughs> they were banning you. <laughs> I'm banned from Alabama, man. I ain't even from there. I ain't do none of y'all. I'm talking about banned from Alabama. And uh, went up with that video. And like, when he said, fuck BLB, man, I got, I would have like 2,000 followers. That he said, I had like 15,000. <laughs> I was like, damn, this dude's a marketing genius. Like, he know how to really do it. I, I didn't even know what's going on. So it's that, that definitely was like, like the whole, the video was uh, definitely an experience, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. That's wild, man. Yeah. Uh, how'd you end up leaking Hercules? Uh, you said what? Hercules. How'd you end up leaking that? Well, it's funny. I, I, re I officially released it, but it was the, I always give Thug the, the three end, the, the three question type of thing. Like, if I ask you three times and you say yes twice, that's a yes. Because <laughs> he'd be like, slap. Hey, you want to drop Hercules? Slap. And then he might be like, no. And I'm like, you said yes twice, I don't care. You just fight me then, because I'm putting this song out, it's the record. But the reason why I put the Hercules record out, because it was a, him and Metro was kind of had a little uh, back and forth thing going on Twitter. And I know how close Metro and Thug was, and I didn't want to see that. So I told Alex, I said, Alex, man, we can't let this happen. I said, mix the record. I said, you gonna mix it, and I'm gonna put it out on Audio Mac. And we was in Paris. And that's how, that's how I always was slick to try and show Thug, like, he, I dropped some music for him. I'd be like, hey, Thug, uh, Hercules is out. I'm on Periscope live, like, getting reaction, like, yeah, just in case you uh, go crazy on me. 
Yeah, y'all fans see that? Yeah, Thug said Hercules, he grabbed a phone on Periscope. He listened to the music and stuff. So it turned out great. And, you know, um, yeah, the purpose of that was just like, I don't, I don't, I don't like to see brothers, you know, get at, go at it. And it was over nothing, you know what I'm saying? So that was really to keep that bond with him and Metro, man. And um, I, I Metro actually came to the, um, Metro came to the mansion and did that beat. And the song actually was just lost until Carly, shout out to Carly. She, she a real a r for, uh, for YSL. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of them songs that y'all like and then put out between Carly and Dolly and even Dora, but like, Carly and Dolly used to always post the songs. Like Dora wouldn't really do that because she know like I don't want my brother's songs to leak. But Dolly, man, Dolly going up. And uh, Carly, she had it was this line he said. He said, "Left my baby mama, my bitch a Barbie wall," and then everybody went crazy. And I'm like, we gotta put that out. And then, you know what I'm saying? I just pushed the line on it. And it's like even little moments like that, like people around, really like help like decide the records it just i'd be the one that's like yo it's going let me grab it and take it and that's kind of how i did with um slime season two okay like slime season two it was like i feel like you know when you got a hit record like lifestyle and it was a year later it's 2015 after that that record died down it's like you got to come with something else and then we got it you know got things back started with slime season one but i'm like yo we need something else to really hit the ice on the cake. And I asked up three times. I said, yo, gonna do it? He like, nah. So we gonna drop signs in too? He like, yeah. And last time he's like, nah. I said, I gotta drop it. I don't give a fuck. So I told Alex, I said, listen, here's the plan. I'm gonna put the album out. But if he asks you, who told you, say me. And if he asks me who did it, I'm gonna say you. <laughs> <laughs> so he's gonna be confused. So when that happened, I dropped the album. And that shit went crazy. And again, I went on live Periscope and I said, hey, fuck. I said, like, everybody, Thug's walking through the door. He doesn't know the album came out. I got him on live. I said, hey, Thug, you just dropped a tape today. He like, huh? A tape? And I got the video of it. He walk in. He like, oh. And he like, ooh, you put that one on there? I said, yeah, I put that one on there. That Big Rex, yeah, I put that on there. He like, ooh, you put that? Me for the night? I said, yeah, I put that on there too. He like. Oh, yeah, be here. You ain't, ain't nothing fool with, baby. So that that project is when it went from like, like the whole one hit wonder or whether he really had hits. That project was like, yo, this dude Thug really something dangerous. He really can do music because he was singing, rapping, and he had island vibes, R and B vibes. He just had everything, and I just knew how important that was. And you know, a lot of people don't realize like, as me as a director. My, my musical background is how I really like push through. It wasn't really just the directing, it was like, I'm trying to pick the records because I feel like this is what's gonna make the artists grow instead of just waiting on them. You know, like um, every plaque, I got like 12 plaques. None of them plaques is because I directed the video, it's because I picked them songs out, you know what I'm saying? And taking that risk, sometimes you gotta do that. Like with, as directors, you know, we see, we see what the fans are saying. They hit us up, they be in our comments. They be like, yo, you gonna shoot this record? So I, I would really just listen to the fans. And um, by me listening to them, it like, it worked, worked every time. And, you know, I definitely, you know, you know, commend, you know, directors and want y'all to get more into the A&R side because I feel like the, the, the directors right now in the game, not talking about Dave Myers or Colin Tilly, you know, no offense to them, they dope. But they didn't break Kendrick Lamar. You know what I'm saying? But when you talk about a guy like Jerry from Detroit, he a part of breaking payroll. He a part of breaking Dirk, because he was working with Dirk before Dirk was popping. You know, even breaking Vaughn. You know, and a lot of cats in Detroit. You know, you got guys like Drew filmed it. He another mm -hmm. one that he was making crazy stuff with Vaughn and, and um, YMW Melly. And like I said, you got young guys in Florida, Benny Flash. You know, you got, you know, of course, Locker Films, Cole Bennett, all them cats, like, they responsible for breaking most of the artists in the game, you know? And it's like, we don't get credit for that. We don't get no credit. So really just telling y'all, y'all directors, y'all, you guys are very important and you're an ARs, you know what I'm saying? Just because you got a DSLR camera, not a red or whatever, or some crazy techno cranes, it's like, you actually saving money you got you had the same young director 
shoot the video with his Ronin and the GH5 or the Sony, and that thing will go up 200 million. Then you'll see the video they do that the artist shoot for $200,000 budget. Shit be like 40,000 views. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, labels be, you know, they know that, they see it. You should look at Young Boy. Young Boy is the biggest YouTube artist, period. How? It's, yeah, it's his music, but it's the youngest that's really directing it. Because, you know, I definitely want to say this, like, you know, you hear a lot of talk out there with people saying that the, the director, artists, rappers got the hardest job in the United States. Well, if y'all got the hardest job in the United States, the well, most dangerous job, what the hell you think the, the video director going through? And he filming you with his back turn. So while you got ops shooting at you, his back turned and he risking his life. So that's why I say a lot of us young directors got to like, you know, not even just young, but directors who coming straight off the street, no college, just a camera and a dream and a backpack. It's like, like take more ownership. Like, man, you a real a &R. Without Without us, without y'all, like it wouldn't be no young boys. It wouldn't have been no Bobby Schmurder, no Chief Keith. Shout out to AZ. You know what I'm saying? Like the the the, the stuff I'm doing with Thug, it wouldn't have happened that same way because they didn't know how to shoot videos for him. He didn't, you know what I'm saying? It's like you 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 rent a techno crane with with a, how Thug was back then. Like you know, from time to time, he might not show up. A techno <laughs> crane costs four thousand dollars, but with me and my you know GH5, I'm right there with it. Like I'ma wait. If I gotta wait eight hours on Thug or two days, I'm gonna be right here pull up to his mom's house, what's good? what's good? Yeah, a lot of them videos I done shot at his house, but it's like, we make them sacrifice. And I know other young directors do that same thing. They gotta pull up on them. You know what I'm saying? These 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 artists, they, they got enemies. We just gonna keep it real. Like, yeah, they got real stuff going on and we take that sacrifice working with them. And it's like, we gotta start stepping up and, and really, um, you know, holding each other down. You know, I always tell people like, I ain't in competition with nobody. And not to say it, because I feel like I'm better. I feel like, cause we building each other. You know, with me seeing Keep Motion, you know, Keep Motion, the youngin, he had the camera with the stick on it. You know what I'm saying? He shooting BTS with the backpack. He just happy to be there. And to see Keep Motion boss up. He shooting the biggest videos in the city. He got the number one artist. He got Lil Baby under his mm -hmm. belt. And he ain't, he ain't a director that came along with Lil Baby and OI. Oh, I shot the big $200,000 budget for Lil Baby. Nah, Keep Motion was there when Lil Baby was just Lil Baby. And he grew with him. As Lil Baby got better, Keep Motion got better. And look at him now, man, he got big boy sets. And even seeing the video he did that for uh, 42 Doug and Lil Baby, that song, the, We Paid. Uh, we Paid. Mm -hmm. You know, Lil Baby shot another video. Um, uh, I forgot which one it was, but he, he shot a couple videos with other directors and the buzz was big. Yeah. We paid, killed him. <laughs> yeah, because Key Motion really know the, he know the vision. And it's like, we got to start putting a lot more respect on that and start rewarding them. Like, man, they need awards. Like, guys like Key Motion need an award. You know, um, uh, it's, another, it's another guy, AM Visuals. Like, man, he hard. He got that commercial Hype Williams look. So it's like, when I see directors growing, it's like I'm happy to see that because it's like I know how hard it was even for me coming up. Like the biggest budget that I ever shot was like 60000 I ain't never just shot no crazy big budget video, but I made the most out of it. But I want the, the new generation, like I want y'all to play with a $200,000 video because I know what they'll do with it, you know, and um. You know, like I say it's, it's it's definitely a time where you know it's not it's not that directors have like some beef, but it's time for us to start. You know, hey yo, bro, that was that was hard. Hey, you use the techno crane, to, you know, hook me up with your people. It's like we gotta unite and link together because it's like these these young directors that's coming in the game. It's like they really are really feeding the industry, and and I really want to even like tell labels like it's disrespectful that y'all come to these youngins and y'all put two thousand dollar budgets for the video. But y'all know y'all done paid the stylist 10, 20 bands. Makeup artists getting 2,500. Like, y'all got it. Y'all know y'all got it. Like, I think the minimum that any director on uh, a DSLR camera, which is like a Sony, 
Paying something minimum y'all should be shooting for is ten thousand. Not saying you wrong if you shoot a video for twenty five hundred in the streets. I get that, but the label, the lowest they should be hitting you up is for t is, is ten thousand. And yeah, you eat all that ten. I don't care if you ain't rent no lights or nothing. That ten, you deserve that ten, cause you ain't even getting a residual check off the video. Yet, better yet, you see a video. Let's say like all young boy stuff. Like yeah, the young director get paid. But at the same time, that video is going to keep making money and money. And it's like 10000 ain't nothing to get these youngies. It ain't, it ain't no money. They really got it. So it's like, stop doing that. Like, come to these directors with respect because they really, they, they out there with a lot of these artists that these big directors like, oh, I heard he got shot at. I'm not shooting his video. It's like, show them some love, man. That 10, that 10 ain't going to hurt y'all. <laughs> Throw them some money. You know what I'm saying? So, like I say, let's, let's, let's build that. Yeah. Oh. All right, so before we wrap it up, there'll be um, talk to us about this music. I think you're dropping yeah. some music now, right? You just dropped the video. Yeah, so I just dropped the video. Um, I had dropped a, a little documentary piece called um, 11 Years in One Minute. And basically that's just explaining my 11 years. And in that I was saying like this whole time I was always an artist. But, um, you know, during 2014, I'm in between Thug and Quan. That's like being in between Lil Baby and 21 Savage. Like, that's intimidating. You know what I'm saying? I'm hearing the best music by Thug and Quan. I'm like, I, ain't, I need to step back and just focus on music. I mean, focus on directing. So when things, you know, of course, you slow down. And I, I moved to LA in 2016. And I started wanting to go into more role of a creative director and, you know, behind the scenes, like hiring directors to work with artists and stuff. Um, that's when I had more time to work on music. So like, I say for like the past two years, I've been back on my music, just quietly recording. Um, got some beats from a young kid, he's only 17. He's from like New Zealand. His name, uh, Reese. excuse me. And then I got another producer um, by the name of Benji. He's from Canada. They both are uh, 17 and uh, 20, real young, cold. And um, it's like, I spent all these years building up like, young directors, producers, engineers. Like I'll be telling engineers like, nope, that's wrong. Do this, do that, switch it around. So it's like, I feel like over the past 11 years, I had to um, build up everybody, build up my team in order for me to be an artist. So now I ain't gotta just go off and use a director. You know, I got my own youngest to do it. And you know, it might be some stuff they might mess up on, but I can fix it cause I can edit. So, um, and back on the music, I just dropped a single called Where It Was. It's, a, it's an acoustic type of vibe produced by my guy Wolf. That's another one of my producers I work with. And um, just building that. And um, I feel like my real dreams and everything I got with my plans, it's going to really follow with the music. Like I'm still going to do the directing, but it's like, I feel like Hype Williams did the million dollar budgets. <laughs> yeah, y'all going to know, man, be on tour. We got to get it, man. We ain't playing. They got to give them two million to direct this video. <laughs> yes. And I'm getting paid by the million for it. You know what I'm saying? So I want to do that. You know, I want to do movies, but the, I feel like it's going to follow with the music, man. And, you know, me being around an artist like Thug for all them years, you know, seeing like, you know, me learning from how when he go in the studio, like he don't leave until he done. He do not play. Like he might have people in there chilling, but he don't play when he get in that booth. And seeing how he brought, like he had Wheezy around him, and he got, uh, you know, the guys like Isaac and Goose, just a bunch of young producers around him. Like he he knew how to keep talent in one room, even just keeping me around, like me and Alex, like we feed off each other. So when he did that, it taught me like you got to do the same. You wanna you wanna really be legendary. You got to keep legendary people around you. And um, so me learning that. And then just seeing the business behind the scenes, you know, uh, for a short time, I worked for APG Atlantic and it was like, that's like me getting my PhD. I seen everything. I'm seeing the numbers. I'm seeing they were young boy getting, yeah, seeing his numbers. And I was like, I see why he on the YouTube. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I know the email game, you know, you got to put everything in the email, keep everybody in contact. And even with uh, like labels, a lot of people, uh, don't know about it, but the, the biggest backbone to a label is the law, lawyer team, that law team. And a lot of these, you know, a lot of young entertainers and young artists don't be knowing, like, you know, to have that on them, 
so they can avoid bullshit like getting sued for samples or just anything. That law team don't nothing go through them. You know, you will shoot a video and you might shoot a video in uh, Ocean Drive in Miami and you got people hotels in it, but you talking about Dracos and, and them people who own hotels like, I don't mess with Dracos, so got to take the video down. So me learning with the label, it just taught me everything full circle, how to clear records like properly, you know, so now I feel like I got all the training I need. So I'm just gonna keep pushing. And I got another video coming out. I'm gonna just keep dropping them. I said I'm gonna have a project come out like April. I okay. thought it was gonna be March, but I'm gonna have a project that's gonna come out in April and just keep shooting, keep pushing. And you know, um, of course I know DPs at all these labels and from Interscope to Republic, but I'm not approaching nobody with my stuff. They're gonna have to come to me at the end of the day because I know what labels looking for. You know, um, they're not looking for you to walk in the office. Because nowadays with labels, before you step foot in the label, they already know how much money they're going to make off you. So you going in there talking about you want a million, but your streams is like 50,000. It's like, nah, they don't judge you based off your talent no more or, or, or potential. Labels judge you off of, can I make money from you? You know, in the music industry, what I learned, even with working for a label, there's no more music guys inside of labels. Music guys is guys like Teddy Riley, guys like L.A. Reid. And they talk about L.A. Reid and say L.A. Reid is a big budget buster, like he spends the money because he just believes in you just because you got talent. But these new generation of CEOs and execs, they don't even care about that. They like, yo, this kid has a TikTok video and it's doing a million a day. Sign him. He's worth this much because the analytics is what mm -hmm. tells you. So the analytics can work in your favor and it can work against you. With me growing, of course, okay, I may be BLB and known as a director, but as an artist, I'm just like every other artist starting out. Only thing I probably got advantage on is I just got a lot of knowledge and experience in the game, but we on the same playing field, so, and it's like, I got tons of Thug songs on my hard drive, but I know, like, Thug know I know, like, better than that to do that, because he like, I didn't do it. You know, Thug make people forget that he was actually signed to Gucci. So that's how strong and how hard he pushed. And I got to do the same thing. I got to go so hard with the music. People be like, you shot Jack? You shot with that? <laughs> like, do they don't believe it no more. You know what I'm saying? And it's not to erase your history, but it's just like to, to elevate yourself. And, you know, of course, it's cool to have cosigns and stuff. But what I'm doing, you know, I'm more on the R&B pop vibe. So it's like, it's, it's going to be a uphill pushing the rock up the hill. It ain't gonna be a, a shock that, you know, yeah, I'm from the streets, but you're not gonna hear me singing like, I got the Draco, and like, <laughs> nah, I ain't gonna do that, man. That ain't, that ain't me, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna talk about some real cool stuff and try to entertain you that way and have some dope visuals. So um, like I said, I'm definitely pushing hard with that. And uh, like I say, stay on the lookout. My production team is the Shooters. Um, a lot of people don't know, I direct the Dope Baby. Well, the Shooters direct the Dope Baby. The and, remix um, or not the first one? No, I ain't do the remix. Okay. I, ain't gonna lie. I ain't do the remix. So I had some questions about that remix. Yeah, <laughs> but the original one, like I kicked it off with them. You know what I'm saying? I was even telling them to, uh, I said, yo, y'all got to put this next to WAP. I said, this is the answer to WAP, how WAP is like drawing controversy. I said, y'all got to put that one right next to it. And they're like, you right. I said, because they could be like, yo, go baby, this dude talking about boat, goat and all this. And Cardi was, I said, it's going to be a good back and forth. And, you know, I just uh, you talk to the, you know, the people over there at uh, LVI, and I'm like, yo, I appreciate y'all letting me come on. And they're like, man, we appreciate you. Like, you really kicked it off. So that was uh, me making that transition to, like, having my production team do it. My, my youngest getting the experience with directing and being behind that. So I'm going to always keep directing and shooting. But, you know, I, I love being a part of the whole process, not just the video. I love, like, the marketing behind it. So just keep doing that and, you know, Go live with it, you know? Mm -hmm. that's, that's all I can do. And, and I, like I say, when I look at plaques that I got, and my name is on a plaque or whatever, you know, based on the fact that I might have NR the record or, um, you know, put the, uh, directed the video, it's like, if I can, if I can do that, then I can, I, can, I can get up to a point where I can have a plaque that really say just my name. You know, I believe that, so okay. we're going to see, but we're going to push, man. Y'all got to support your Uncle BL, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to do it. Say the love is beautiful, but see I'm scared of it. I 
First they love you, then they leave you, and I'm scared of. I hear my heart 